Welcome to the Niche Pursuits Podcast. My name is Jared Bauman. Today we're joined by Jesse Lakes from Genius Link. Jesse is a return visitor to the Niche Pursuits Podcast. And we are continuing the conversation about affiliate marketing and a lot of the topics that are really relevant for today's affiliate marketer. One of the things we start with is link localization and the concept of localizing your links to the country that the visitor is accessing and clicking from. And how, from what he's seen, this can lead to an increase uh, in t by 10 to 20 percent uh, to your revenue just with a couple of quick fixes. Uh, we spend the bulk of the time, though, talking about what he calls the multi-retailer approach to affiliate marketing. It's this concept that instead of just offering, say, Amazon or one uh, or another affiliate uh, opportunity for the readers and the visitors to your website, it's this concept of giving them choice, giving the reader the choice of three, four, or five different retailers that they can buy and make their purchase from. He has a lot of really great data that he shares about how this can really increase your revenue. As a matter of fact, according to their research over at Genius Link, they have seen a 2.2x increase in revenue by using this multi-retailer approach. Uh, that's more than double uh, an increase in revenue. And so it really is an interesting conversation that we get into. It also, and something that uh, I think is also very interesting, is it helps diversify your affiliate income. Uh, obviously, we all are familiar with the various uh, Amazon decreases in commissions over the years. And by taking a multi-retailer retailer approach, Jesse really showcases why it helps to diversify your revenue streams. Uh, Jesse has offered uh, Choice Pages, which is a product of Genius Link. And so we talk about this concept of choice, giving the viewer, giving the reader, giving the buyer a choice in which retailer they want to buy from and how it can lead to an increase in revenue for you. He shares lots of data that they've collected over the years about this, and it's a really fascinating interview to learn more about it. Again, if you're an, uh, an affiliate marketer, you're really going to want to lean into this one because we talk about how to not only increase your revenue through a couple of different approaches, but also how to diversify your revenue to make your website safer and to make your affiliate marketing platform more diverse and be able to stand the test of time. So I hope you enjoy today's interview. Let's go ahead and dive in. Welcome back to the Niche Pursuits Podcast. My name is Jared Bauman, and I'm thrilled to have Jesse Likes here with us today. Jesse joins us from uh, Genius Link. Jesse, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Jared. It's, uh, it's exciting to be here. And this is uh, a return visit for you. you. You were on, I believe it was episode 168 I saw uh, okay. a couple of years ago with, uh, with Spencer talking about, uh, about Genius Link and some of the Amazon changes at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, Spencer and I go way back. So yeah, um, it was uh, only a matter of time before I... Uh, Fingers crossed, got reinvited to the podcast. <laughs> well, clearly, if you're doing something right, if you got reinvited, so it was a, it was a good episode. I I listened to it um, in lieu of this one here. Why don't you give us some backstory? Tell us, you know, a lot of people probably haven't heard that that podcast, but bring us up to speed. Obviously, on your on your journey to Genius Link. Yeah, it's a, it's kind of a it's kind of a funny one. Um, starts out uh, a bit over a decade ago. I had a uh, a series of um, extreme sports soundtrack websites where I took the soundtracks from different films. You know, Warren Miller puts out a new film every year and has 50 awesome songs that most people haven't ever heard of. Um, and I would link those up with uh, links to iTunes and Amazon. And after a couple of years, saw a nice hockey stick growth in traffic, but my revenue was, was really flat. Uh, and I was scratching my head trying to figure that out and realized that 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 growth of traffic was mostly coming from international. And because at that time, music was mostly uh, digital, uh, digital rights management, et cetera. Uh, I was essentially serving up a broken link for all those international users. Oh. So that kind of created the oh no moment where that's that's where this revenue isn't isn't growing. So uh, I talked to my best friend who happened to be an engineer at Microsoft, started talking about how can we can we build a smart link, a link that sends people to the uh, the right store so they can buy the, the recommended product. So based off their country, location, you have device, et cetera, just be a little bit smarter about how that link resolves. And we started working on that project um, 2000, 2009. Um, and about the same time, I was writing a book about the iTunes affiliate program because it happened to be uh, the, the, the main moneymaker for the, for the website. It was a great affiliate program, not much documentation. Uh, just about ready to wrap up that book, uh, sent a copy off to some people at uh, iTunes that I had uh, found via LinkedIn. Uh, I was expecting they'd be pretty excited about you know uh, having a book written about their affiliate program. And uh, 
turned out to be a cease and desist that I got back. Um, ah. So yeah, I'd always been an <laughs> Apple fanboy. It was a, it was a bit of a, an eye opener, but uh, ended up popping on the phone with this this woman um, and had this uh, you know thirty seconds of nice polite civil conversation and forty five minutes of just kind of yelling at each other back and forth. You know, who was I to be writing all these lies? How could I possibly know what was going on? They'd never heard of me. You know, I can't publish this book, etc. But at the end of it, we came to the agreement that. Uh, if I would let them review the book and delay publishing by a, a month or so, uh, they would take a, take a look and let me know what was what was wrong. Um, it sounded like a win-win situation. So I uh, sent them over um, you know, uh, the, the, the document they could start editing and, and taking a look at. And within a, a couple of weeks, the tone shifted significantly. And I was uh, actually invited to come lead the uh, affiliate program for them. Uh, it turns out that- Wow, all, that's a turn all, of events. <laughs> exactly. After all the research, uh, I actually knew a few things about the iTunes affiliate program. Uh, and when I was at iTunes, it was uh, you know, trading in a uh, flip flops and an endless summer mentality. I was being a raft guy between Colorado and Costa Rica and, and working on these um, websites kind of on the side, but moved to moved to Cupertino, got a commute in a cubicle and um, was paid really well to actually make one of these problems that I talked about in the book, this idea of geofragmentation to make it much worse. We, uh, we three X the size of the affiliate program in my, my couple of years that were there. Um, but as we were expanding it, we were, were again, making this, this problem worse where each of the different programs had its own um, own storefront that you had to buy from. And it was also a different affiliate network. So it was just this real mel of a hess where, where things were just really complicated to make sure that all these different users or you know, music lovers were, were sent to the right store. At the same time, Amazon was was radically increasing its uh, footprint as well across the world. So after a couple of years at Apple, it was it was a great experience. Just realized that there was a, a huge opportunity here that needed to be solved. So dove in and, and uh, started as Geo Riot, and we rebranded as Genius Link. But it was iTunes uh, initially, and then Amazon again was just this huge opportunity. So uh, really kind of dove in to make one link just work across the board. So work as far as a user experience to, to send users to the right storefront uh, that, that's optimized for them with the, the correct language, you know, currency, shipping, et cetera. But also from the monetization side as well to make sure that the, uh, the affiliate program is using the right affiliate tracking information, et cetera. So that uh, someone with a, a decent medium body or long tail of traffic is, is going to now monetize the majority of the traffic instead of just that, that, um, that one audience that they've originally built the website for. So that was kind of the, the original conversation we had uh, with Spencer was, was back in the day when, you know, just talking about an Amazon link that works, um, monetized fully, uh, resolved correctly, et cetera. Uh, since then, uh, the, the business continue to evolve. And uh, I think we'll talk a little bit more about that, but it's been, yeah, it's been a, a wild ride, but Spencer, uh, a number of years ago at a, we're, we're both part of a, a group called Rhodium Weekend. Um, which is a, a group of, of people that buy and sell digital assets, uh, et cetera. So uh, I've known Spencer for a while and have had various conversations along the way. So it's a, he's a good guy to know. Well, first things first, if I ever get a, uh, a legal letter in the mail, I'm going to call you, <laughs> respond, or at least get on the phone for me. Maybe we can turn this into a win-win. Man, that is a heck of a story. Thank um, you. And I, I mean, I've... Uh, Obviously, the idea of Amazon and link localization for a country is is something probably a lot of affiliate website owners have heard of. How big of a problem do you? I mean, because I know we're 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 going to be talking about some of the uh, some of the different options now on the table. But I, I think just underscoring the situation that that affiliate website owners are up against. How big of a problem do you think it is for for affiliate uh, website owners that aren't paying attention to to this idea, this concept of link localization? Yeah, great question. So there's a couple of different ways to, to look at this, right? So it's definitely a problem that you should not focus on initially. If you're just starting out your website, you know, focus on your core demographic, focus on your core audience, you know, work on building a website, get those links out there, you know, work on, on building a community and a website that works. The localization is really an optimization. And, and I would argue it's an optimization that should happen sooner or later. But for the most part, it's not worth really dealing with until you have at least a thousand visits that are international. Um, we typically you know, recommend at least a thousand visits, um, at least five to 10% of your traffic being international. But it, that's just kind of the, um, the, the process you're gonna go through when you build a website anyway, is that eventually you know, people are gonna see it from around the world. That's the beauty of the internet. You know, someone in India and UK and in Australia are all gonna be really interested in that content that you're publishing, those reviews or whatever it may be that you're, you're doing on your website. So as things evolve, it is a, a really important thing to start to pay attention to. So taking again, kind of a step back to kind of quantify that, you know, Amazon now has 20 different storefronts around the world and 19 public affiliate programs. Turkey is the one storefront where it's not a public affiliate program. Um, on top of that, Amazon also has over a million different publishers. So 
I would argue that the problem is, is, is relatively large. And we've seen that over the decade of, um, you know, that Genius Link has been in business. We've, we've seen some, some pretty fantastic growth as, as people are realizing that there is so much more of the traffic that can be monetizing. That it's not a ton of work um, to be able to start to monetize it, et cetera. So um, again, don't focus on it in the early days. Definitely something to think about as you go and, and realize that there's a lot of people out there that are starting not to think about it and start to do a lot about it. So in brass tacks, what does that look like then to to add localization, link localization across the board? Maybe using your product, like using Genius Link. What 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 does that really look like? Can you help us just paint a picture for what that is? Not in a theoretical, but in a practical sense. I've got an affiliate website. I'm driving twenty five thousand uh, visitors a month. Probably the standard, you know, sixty five percent U S. And then maybe the re- yeah, I'm saying standard. I don't know if that's standard. I'm just giving an example. Seventy <laughs> okay. percent. Yeah, you hit a good number, but yeah. Yeah, seventy percent U S. traffic, and then the rest is from different parts of the world. So, what does this look like, kind of in brass tacks, to 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 capture all this lost potential revenue? For sure. So, just a quick disclaimer: you know, Genius Link is one of the numerous tools that you can use to do the, the you know, fixing the localization. Um, that number has slowly shrank as, you know, there have been a, a few a few people that become a little bit more dominant. You know, thankfully, you know, fingers crossed, we're, we're doing pretty well. Amazon now offers a solution as well that's kind of in-house. It's um, it's not the premium that the Genius Link is as well, but just want to be clear that, you know, Genius Link is not the only solution. Yeah. Okay. Uh, of course, I'm biased and we'll, we'll recommend it as the premium solution, but we can we can talk about that later. But, you know, but back you're, to also, the, you're just a deep, no, a source of knowledge on this idea of link localization. So, you know, I think it's really good to talk through sure. the brass tax of it and hear your yeah. opinions on the brass tax of it, because, you know, a lot of us are just poking around when it comes to something like this. For sure. So the first thing to do, again, is you need to be signed up for that core Amazon affiliate program that you're monetizing through already. And typically that's amazon.com. It's the largest catalog size and it's the biggest store, et cetera. The next step is you need to sign up for a handful of the other affiliate programs. And again, there's there's 20 of them out there. Don't sign up for all 20 of them. Sign up for the ones where you actually see significant traffic. So if it's an English-based website, that's likely Canada, UK, possibly Australia. Um, And just to be clear, when you say other, you mean other Amazon affiliate programs because mm -hmm. to drill down, you're not you can't take a US uh, Amazon account and then go earn money in the UK or something like that. That's a great question. Sign up for, yeah. Exactly. Each of those programs are very specific to a storefront. So you can live in the UK and you can sign up for the amazon.com affiliate program and you can earn commissions from amazon.com. But someone from the UK is more likely to transact from amazon.co.uk than amazon.com. So again, the whole localization is to make sure that you know your neighbor is buying from amazon.co.uk while your friend of the US is buying from amazon.com. Yeah. And that localization is, is a key piece to, to make sure it happens. And then back to the other piece, of those 19 public affiliate programs, each one of those is very specific to a storefront. So the amazon.com associates program, as it's called, um, that affiliate program will only earn you commissions from sales that happen on amazon.com. The amazon.co.uk affiliate program, also called the associates program, not to make it confusing, of course, but that is very specific to the amazon.co.uk storefront. So the sales that happen on that storefront have to use that affiliate program not, you can't switch them. You can't use your amazon.com tracking information for sales around the world. So. Okay. So it, right now, if I'm a visitor to mm-hmm. my affiliate website of 25,000 people, and if I'm a visitor and I live in Canada mm-hmm. and I come to a, uh, an affiliate website that's monetized only, but with the U uh, S Amazon uh, associates program, if I buy something, I'm going to be buying it through the U S platform. Mm-hmm. And does that mean I can't make a purchase or does it mean I make the purchase, but but the affiliate owner doesn't get the credit for the sale. That's a that's a great question. It's it's very nuanced. So if you okay. are coming from Canada and you go to Amazon.com and want to buy digital music, you cannot. Um, if you want to buy something, you know, some physical good, you likely can. But then you're also going to have to pay probably some sort of fee to your credit card company for doing a you know international currency transaction. You're going to likely have to pay a bit more for shipping. You probably maybe have to pay some tariffs to get it across the country, et cetera. So okay. you can buy from Amazon.com. Amazon.com does ship internationally, but it's a, such an easier transaction if you right. buy from Amazon.ca where it's, you know, Canadian dollars, you know, there's going to be no crazy, you know, credit card fees, uh, it's going to ship from somewhere that's much faster, right. et cetera. So, okay. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, the barriers there are significant. So you're, you're basically all but losing all of those conversions uh, in foreign countries, unless you localize your links. Exactly. There's going to be some bleed over, yeah. but yeah, for the most part, it, it's, it's fairly binary. Um, you have, you support that, that program for localization, you earn from that affiliate program, you're going to see an upside, your consumers are going to convert a whole lot better. 
which you know, kind of gets back to your, your brass tax question, right? So where are your website visitors coming from? Again, English speaking, you know, you've got a handful of countries. Let's keep it simple, right? So Canada, uh, UK, and, and Australia. You want to go and sign up for those affiliate programs. Those affiliate programs look and act almost identical. So um, a lot of people are kind of uh, concerned about going to have to spend time to sign up for each of the programs. You can honestly do it in about five minutes. So you know, five minutes for Canada, five minutes for UK, five minutes for Australia. Uh, while you're actually at the UK site, uh, it's just a couple extra clicks to take that same uh, application information and apply it to some of the other programs in, in uh, Europe as well. So France, Italy, Spain, and Germany are easy add-ons, but let's ignore that for right now. But again, it's not a big time suck to do so, but it definitely is intimidating sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, so you sign up for those programs, and then you go and you, you figure out what kind of tool you want to use for, for the localization. So again, you know, being, being the expert on Genius Link, go sign up for a Genius Link account. Again, that shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes. And then you have an option of how you want to implement it. Um, if you've got a WordPress-based blog, um, it's really easy to just use our WordPress plugin, install the plugin, add your API key from your, your uh, affiliate account, and we're going to go and now start to find all the Amazon links. And when someone clicks on them, we're going to translate them. Um, to the right store, and then we're going to add your affiliate tracking information that you've provided in our dashboard to, to make it all work. So all said and done, um, you know, 15 minutes to sign up for the program, say five minutes to sign up for Genius Link, 10 minutes to add in your information from the different programs, your API key. So in, in half an hour, you should be able to start localizing the, those key markets. And then all of a sudden you see that India now is an important program for you. Uh, India's got a little bit of complication, but the, it's essentially the same gist where you'll sign up for the program. Uh, if you're coming from outside of India, you'll probably want to use Q-Links, which is an aggregator to help sign up for the program. Drop that in, and now you can start monetizing your, your clicks from, from India. You know, Germany, France, same sort of process. So as your website grows, as your analytics you know, give you hints about where, where there's opportunity, just go sign up for those programs, drop it in. We do, you know, the JavaScript from the WordPress plugin will make sure all that kind of heavy lifting is done. So all your links are converted. Uh, encourage you obviously to, to test your link, you know, check your reports uh, periodically, both in the Genius Link dashboard, as well as the associates programs. Um, and yeah, at the end of the day, your traffic, you didn't have to do anything more to, to, to drive traffic. And I always, of course, encourage you to drive more traffic, but the traffic you've got now is just being monetized better. And you're going to start seeing checks come in from Canada and UK and Australia. And now that uh, Amazon's doing direct deposit, that just lands in your bank account. And typically, if, if we're saying it's 65% that uh, is US traffic, that means that 35% is international. What we've seen on average, and I take this with a massive grain of salt, is that for every 10% of international traffic you've got, you can add 5% to your bottom line. So that 35% traffic should be about 17.5% you can add to your bottom line. So okay. if you're making a thousand bucks a month before, yeah, you should be able to add at least $175 now as well. Some do way better than that. Some are a little bit lower for sure. Um, it really depends on how niche you are. Are those niches you know, common in other countries? Are they available from Amazon, et cetera? If you're you know, some very super specific thing that isn't sold in Amazon UK or Amazon uh, Australia, it's gonna be harder to find that product, obviously. It's not gonna be able to um, take, monetize as much of that international traffic. But in right, general, yeah, yeah some, that half a percent. Some products sell really well overseas. Some are, you know, Specific to a single country, but I, okay, that was gonna be my next question. So, I mean, basically if for a limited amount of work, localizing links takes, you know, an hour ish, maybe a little longer, maybe a little, little shorter, depending on where you're at, but for an extra hour, if you're in about a thousand dollars a month and you've got 20% of your traffic internationally, a good back of the napkin math would say you should increase your, uh, your revenue by 10% for that hour mm -hmm. of work. Mm -hmm. That's a, and, it, and that just goes on and on every month. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> So clearly it's a good ROI. I guess that's really what we're getting down to. Our, so in general, uh, we have a Genius Link guarantee that you should see at least a 2.5X ROI. Most of our clients see between eight and 10X ROI. Um, so yeah, it's it's a pretty good investment for, as a tool and for your time after you have that community right. built. Um, again, it's it's don't... You know, don't go sign up for a hosting, you know, start your website and then go sign up for, for Genius Link. Yeah, I really encourage you to spend a little bit of time building that site, building that community, Again, you need some measurable percent of international traffic before it makes sense to start monetizing international traffic. Right. Okay, let's um let's continue to evolve here. Uh, I I want to transition a bit because I remember so Amazon changed the landscape a bit for affiliate websites <laughs> last. I mean, they've been doing it for years, right? But yeah. last year was a really pivotal one. I think it was April of 2020 mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. when they slashed affiliate commissions in some categories 3x you know by a third it dropped to a third of what it was mm -hmm. some just got halved i think i remember hearing you actually interviewed on a podcast right after that 
talking about the need for affiliate website owners to evolve beyond Amazon and into other affiliate programs. And, you know, at that time, it was still something that I think a lot of affiliate website owners were pretty new at considering, you know, Amazon had been pretty easy. And even though other affiliate opportunities were maybe paying higher, Amazon was still paying quite well. And so over the last year and a half, this has become a big topic for affiliate website owners, right? And, and it's going to continue. So no matter when this podcast, when you listen to this podcast, it's probably a topic of Amazon's a great platform to get started on. But as you grow your traffic, which is what we've already been talking about, once you've established that traffic, it's worth looking into other um, avenues and other affiliate programs. I think that's a good launching pad because what what spurred this conversation on, this, this podcast interview is a, a, a blog post by Spencer many months ago mm-hmm. about moving off of Amazon for other affiliate programs. Um, so talk about that because you, you read that article and actually reached out. We, we started the conversation about this based on your research and your expertise in not just the Amazon affiliate program, but in other affiliate programs. Yeah. So again, just a, lots of good stuff in there. I'm excited to dive into this. Um, you know, Amazon has a history of in the spring change their affiliate program. Thankfully in 2021, they did not. But in 2020, as you mentioned, it was a pretty drastic one. Um, they've had pre- three pretty significant changes in the last five years. So it's you know kind of every other year-ish, uh, we see something happen. And that's that's challenging, right? Uh, you know, as you said, Amazon's affiliate program is a great place to start. Uh, it's, it's really easy to use. It converts really well. Amazon's catalog is huge. They have great market share. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, that market share, Amazon's huge, but it's only 40%. And I say only, you know, that, <laughs> take that either way. But that means essentially two out of every five sales happen on Amazon. But that also means that three out of every five sales happen off of Amazon. Mm. So the big kind of um, argument that I was, I was making that the point of view I was trying to share is that Amazon is great. It definitely deserves a seat at the table. You know, there's lots, you know, 100 plus, 100 million plus prime members out there. Um, but at the end of the day, there's other retailers that sell that same product and may also have great commissions as well. So Spencer, you know, his, his blog post was sidestepping Amazon. Right. And I, I don't necessarily believe that it should be an either or conversation, you know, Amazon or Best Buy, you know, Amazon or Nike. It should be a a combination, you know, Amazon and Nike, Amazon and Best Buy. There are lots of different retailers that sell that same product. Some of them have better commission rates. Some of them have lower commission rates. Some have larger uh, cookie windows. Some of them have shorter windows. You know, Amazon is only 24 hours. But at the end of the day, instead of just focusing on that last step of the funnel, uh, you're taking some intent and turning into a purchase. If you can control a little bit more of that funnel as well uh, and help people do some due diligence and find what retailer is best for them, either the lowest price, actually has it in stock. You know, it's, it's a, a company that does, you know, curbside pickup that may only be a few blocks away from them. Um, so they can get it almost immediately, et cetera. There's all these different reasons why someone may not want to use Amazon. So that whole concept of multi-retailer is what we call it, you know, Amazon and one or two or three other retailers seems to be a, a pretty winning formula. It's, it's good for the consumer because they can find, you know, the product from a store that works for them. It's good for you because you know most every retailer has an affiliate program these days, um, and it's it's ultimately you know good for for the other retailers to get a, a place at the table. But at the end of the day, it's also boosting your commissions. And it turns out that this optimization is is also helping Amazon's conversion rates. Uh, we've had multiple people tell us uh, we've done a big case study in this as well. But after going kind of adopting the multi retailer, they were able to recover you know two or three x the revenue. With that commission rate cut. So they got back to the rate by using the multi-retailer. They were also starting to diversify the revenue uh, and they were also earning new revenue as well from, from these other retailers. So the idea of multi-retailer seems to be really good for, for everyone involved. Um, knock on wood, but results so far have been very promising. So let me play devil's advocate. I've got, Please. You know, uh, I run a marketing agency for a living. And um, uh, one of the oldest adages I've always been taught in marketing and subscribed to is that customers want freedom from choice, not freedom of choice. So conventional wisdom in marketing might suggest that giving people options uh, dissuades them from buying. You're suggesting the opposite. You're suggesting a multi-retailer approach works. Why, why do you think that is, just theoretically speaking? You know, why is it that people like that choice and actually engage further rather than disengage? So analysis paralysis is absolutely real. And I think there's some, some magic in curation, right? It's, um, you give them too many options and, and you're right. You know, you, you get you know, bogged down and it's hard to move forward. You get too few options. It's hard to have that momentum to kind of push through. So it seems that kind of three to five is this magic number of, 
of other options where you can encourage people to find the best price below. Um, and they can you know, click the buttons relatively quickly, look at the different aspects that are important to them, again, price or delivery, et cetera. And it's, um, it goes back, do, do you have kids? Yes. Okay. It's always easier to, to move a kid forward when you give them two options, right? Yes. Do you want to yes, brush your teeth or do you want to put on your pajamas, right? It's, do you want to brush your teeth? They're going to tell you no. Do you want to put yeah, on your pajamas? You get nowhere with yes or no questions. That's, that's for sure. Exactly. So I think some of that mentality also, also works here too. You know, do you want to buy from Amazon or do you want to buy from Best Buy? Not do you want to buy or not? You know, so we're, we're kind of working up the funnel, helping build those micro conversions, helping them kind of find the thing and build momentum to actually push through and, and uh, actually do the purchase at the end of the day. Take this all with a grain of salt. I don't know exactly why this works, but we've done some, some pretty exhaustive testing and it seems to be working relatively well for where we've tested. Um, where we've tested is typically you know, social media. There's been some websites as well that have been included. It's typically slightly higher prices. So I don't know if this would work for toothpaste or not, but it works really well for tripods and, and lenses and, and uh, iPhones. Um, so, you know, and then again, the, the proper number of retailers, you know, we have an idea that three to five is the right number, but, um, I can't guarantee that as well. It seems that the music industry loves about 20 different results. The book industry, you know, you know, is, is slightly higher than that as well. But for consumer electronics, yeah, there's a few names that tend to resonate and, and capture relatively well. But it's a great question. I, 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 you know, I have got proof from our tests, but why exactly? Okay. I don't know the psychology. Well, thinking a bit out loud about it, the more I dive, of course, I'm fascinated by the topic just as a marketer. But I think a lot of times the idea in marketing of not giving people too many choices is because they, the reason is because they don't have strong opinions about any of the choices you're giving them. And so you're only serving to confuse them by giving them more options. Really the idea is to, uh, in a standard classic market environment is to say, based on the set of criteria, this is the option that you should pick and here's the reasons why. But the reality is I think a lot of people, what I think you're leaning into with this concept potentially is that people have preferences about where they buy certain things. And some people have preferences about buying on Amazon while others maybe have preferences about buying uh, at Nike or at you know some other version. So maybe it maybe it, it, it blends a bit with that, but you mentioned some of the tests. So let's, um, uh, oh God, I have so many questions. So let's talk. Um, <laughs> Keep coming. <laughs> I mean, in the, let me go back to the article that Spencer had on the, the, the web on nichepursuits.com. Um, and he talked about a brand that was doing it uh, he thought that was moving people off Amazon, I think it was called the future brand. Um, mm -hmm. And talk a bit about what they were doing and why you think a multi-retail approach maybe works better or from your testing, some of the data, how that works. Because there were some great case studies there on the on the article, but they seemed like maybe they, 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 they had more to offer, I guess. Sure. So uh, yeah, Spencer was mentioning Future. So Future PLC is a UK-based company that owns so many different brands these days. Um, and uh, Future is, uh, yeah, we've been really fortunate. Future has been a client of Genius Link for, for some time now. Uh, so we've got to work really closely with them. But Future has, has invested a lot in this widget they call Hawk. Um, and Hawk is essentially kind of a, a multi-retailer price comparison tool that is very scalable, uh, flexible, et cetera. And it ends up in, in most all of their, their uh, properties and, and kind of the product reviews or anytime they talk about a product. And the gist of it is they give some metadata. They also give the different retailers uh, of where, where that, that option or where that um, product is available from. And you know, they'll, they'll do some different things about which ones they highlight or if they include the price or not, you know, call to action, et cetera. Um, and it's, it seems to be working incredibly well. Um, I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head, but there's a, you know, Digiday put out an article not too long ago. I've got it pulled up over here. Um, you know, Future PLC drove nearly 1 billion e-commerce sales in 2020. 1 billion e-commerce sales is pretty ridiculous. Um, yeah. Yes, they're, they're you know, got a number of different brands to do it, but they're obviously doing something, something right. And, you know, anecdotally, if you look around, you know, CNET has a pretty similar approach and CNET is not owned by Future, it's a different company. You know, Wirecutter, again, also does something relatively similar owned by another company. So there seems to be a, a reoccurring trend, especially from these major brands, these major publishers that, that are playing the affiliate game, the, uh, the commerce game. So if you kind of extrapolate that back from what we've seen in our testing, what we've seen, you know, anecdotally from these other major players, there, there's, there's something, there's something here. Um, 
That being said, it's not easy. Uh, finding other retailers that are selling the exact same product um, is, is really challenging to do when you do it by hand. You know, thankfully, you know, Genius Link is more of an engineering firm than anything else. We've got some really smart people writing some great code. Uh, we've been able to, to, to kind of automate the, the vast majority of that. Um, but again, there are some manual components as well. So to kind of get to that second piece, from, from what we've seen, again, a lot of our testing happens uh, on, on social media. Uh, choice pages are, are kind of a tool to encompass these, these uh, multi-retailer play. Uh, they work really well from the description of YouTube videos, et cetera. Uh, we did a test with 10 different YouTubers uh, last year uh, for, for many tens of thousands of, of clicks. And we found that you know, Amazon commissions you know, typically more than double, uh, but total earnings you know, go up about 2.2x. Um, it, we had a 50% of the traffic. So one link, AB split that link. So 50% of the traffic went to straight to Amazon. That was our control. And the test went to these choice pages. Um, and we were able to look at how many clicks, how many commissions, take those EPC to, to make it uh, as, as um, normalized as possible and compared that. And after you know, looking at the 10 different uh, clients that uh, participate in the survey, it was it was pretty overwhelming because um, some of the results were, were staggering. Some of them, you know, had a lift, but it wasn't quite as big. But on average, 2.2x is, is what we saw for conversions and uh, earnings per click. Two, okay, so earlier we are talking about maybe a 10% lift by localizing links. And now what mm -hmm. you're talking about is a 2.2x lift by giving, basically by giving people the choice of picking the retailer they want to purchase from. Exactly. So there's two different axes that we're looking at right here. You know, the localization is for your mid body and long tail. The multi-retailer is kind of that optimization for, for your main body, your, your, your main market. And you, know, you probably don't have to think very far. Where's Genius Link going? It's combining those two things. We've proven that localization makes sense. We've proven now that the optimization for your key market makes sense. Our big push, um, and you're not asking about this, but I get excited about it anyway. So I'm, well, that's just where I'm, going next. I'm going next to talk about, say, so clearly you've, you, you've mentioned choice pages a couple of times. And what does choice pages do? I, I'm, you know, in terms of multi retailer, in terms of giving people the option. Yeah. So choice pages is it's a standalone, it's a very simplified landing page. Starts off, you can throw your logo at the top, but you know, some sort of uh, hero art, image art, you know, little description, call to action, a few buttons, FTC disclaimer, and that's it. It's, it's, specifically designed to just be as clean and as simple as possible. It takes, you know, that product and sells it across different retailers. Um, and it's, you know, again, a, a genius link product that, that you can, you know, build and manage very easily, but it is our embodiment of multi-retailer. Again, it's, it's really well built for kind of social media side. We're experimenting with, uh, with different widgets and, and kind of um, uh, API driven multi-retailer for, for websites as well. But yeah, that's, that's the gist of what a, a choice page is. And it's, yeah, our embodiment for for uh, multi retailer. Okay, so choice page. It's a page, mm -hmm. um, and it, it you're, what you're saying is not only does it facilitate, um, not only does it facilitate giving the reader multiple choices in terms of the retailer they want to buy from, but it actually goes out and does the work at finding the right retailers to partner up with in terms of affiliate programs for the uh, for, for for the affiliate website owner. Yeah. So our original kind of claim to fame, right, was making those Amazon links just across the board. So we've got um, a lot of expertise and you give us a product and we can find that same product in other stores, other Amazon stores. We've enhanced that to also work now across other retailers. And again, it's primarily focused in the US. Your Amazon links are still going to work internationally. Um, but you, know, you may include a, a Best Buy link and a, a b &H photo video link. You know, b &H photo video can ship internationally. You know, Best Buy can to some degree as well. Um, but we're optimizing for the US right now. Localization happens for Amazon and a few other ecosystems internationally. It's the mashing those together so that when a click happens from Germany, we can pop up the three retailers that are specific for Germany. A click happens from Italy. You know, what are the three to five retailers that are selling that product that, that happened there? And we can, again, back to your question, we can automate the vast majority of that. We do give our users uh, override control um, so they can go in and say, you know what? Uh, I don't actually like Best Buy's program because they're paying a really low commission these days. I'd rather use Target or whatever it may be. So there is you know, definitely some manual aspects, but for the most part, um, a lot of that is, is taken care of for you. And that's the goal is to, to be able to, to scale it as efficiently as possible, but also as accurately as possible. I think that's one of the biggest differentiators between us and some of those other, uh, other tools like Amazon's OneLink is that accuracy is so important uh, for us that we, uh, yeah, we, we take it to the next level. We, 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 you want the specific product, we send you the wrong product. That's a massive fail on our part. We care a lot about that. Some of those other providers don't seem to care as much. Um, but anyway, accuracy is key for conversions. 
So let's, um, okay, let's walk through this with an example then. You've talked mm -hmm. a lot about consumer electronics. So let's just say I'm an affiliate uh, marketer that sells TVs, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm selling the biggest and the best TV. Right now, I just send people to Amazon. Mm -hmm. And my conversion rates are, you know, whatever they are in electronics, three or 4%. Um, uh, and so I, I, with choice pages, now you're going to recommend different affiliate programs to me. Maybe you mentioned B&H or mm -hmm. Walmart or these things. I, I, I'm guessing I need to apply and be accepted into these programs. And then I would pass along my unique affiliate information to, to uh, choice pages. And then, but are you going to go out and recommend and tell me which, um, uh, which affiliate programs I should apply to as a TV affiliate or how does that work? Is that something that you guys have data on? Um, you know, how many retailers are you partnered up with? So we, we support about 30 different retailers right now, as far as kind of auto affiliation aspect, where you give us the tracking information, we can make sure that those raw product links turn into affiliate links. We're partnered with about 80 different uh, retailers, mostly US-based retailers, where we can programmatically find, you know, we can check their product catalog and, and find those matches. Um, but we also support you know, both Sovereign Commerce, aka uh, Viglink, as well as Skimlink. So you can add that tracking for, or add their uh, API and get access to 30,000, 40,000 different affiliate programs as well. So you know, we may support, you know, you're pushing these TVs, right? So you've got Amazon, great choice. Walmart, another good choice. Um, and then you also add in, you know, Acme and, you know, whatever else. There's other ones we don't support, but via Skimlinks or Viglink, uh, you can auto affiliate it or you can just drop in the affiliate link as well. So you give us the Amazon link, we're going to find the Walmart and, and Best Buy automatically. But again, you can you can augment and curate those those choice pages exactly how you want. Right. And you can also, you know, we're getting into the weeds here. You may find that, you know, you don't want those other retailers aren't great for South Africa, which happens to be your second largest source of traffic for whatever reason, you can override that link to say all your traffic from South Africa gets these different choices or just goes to whatever one specific retailer is. So you know, the Genius Link is, is completely malleable to, to shift it into how exactly you need it to perform so you can optimize each of those different segments um, and yeah, hopefully boost your conversion ridiculously. Right. So I can get as deep. Yeah, I can get in as deep as I need to and whatnot. Now you talked about a page. So let's talk about it being a page versus a plugin, mm -hmm. you know, versus like, I'm thinking a common uh, one I use actually. So we'll just mm -hmm. use that on my affiliate sites is AAWP. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between choice pages, even genius links or genius link and, um, and AAWP and where do they, where are they different? Uh, yeah. Just where are they different and where the, where, where, where does uh choice pages kind of strongly differ in terms of how it applies? Sure. So AAWP, Amalinks Pro, um, there's a handful of different plugins that you know do a great job giving you a rich, giving the consumer a rich interactive widget to to buy from Amazon. Most of those tools will also allow uh, a Genius Link supported you know, localization aspect as well. So we we work very closely. Our technology for the most part is invisible. Ch choice pages are kind of the exception that we're we're, we're actually putting something in front of our our um, clients. But between AWP and, and and Genius Link for the Amazon localization. Those two are completely compatible. We're, we're not really competing for the choice pages for the multi retailer. Um, again, we we it's mostly um, link based, which works well for social media for for blogs in particular. We don't have a a solution that is in market yet. We are uh, dog fooding with it. So Kit.co is is one of our platforms. Um, it's a place for creators to go share the products they love. Uh, we've been really messing with that to to kind of refine exactly how we want those widgets to look and, and act. Uh, so it's it's you know a great place where we've got you know uh, half a million different users on on that site. Um, you know building and recommending products so we can really learn exactly how it should look uh, to again optimize those conversions. We're going to nail that before we actually push out some sort of plugin um, and how those will work together in the future. Uh, great question. Um, there may very well be a collaboration um, or we, we may have a, a widget as well. Um, ask, ask me again in six months. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll hold you to that. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got these pages, right? They're, they're currently up. They're live. They're getting traffic. Mm -hmm. They're about, you know, the best TV for your garage, the best TV for your, uh, uh, patio, the best TV for small living rooms. Uh, I'm not in the TV space, but I'm just making stuff up. Is, it sounds like you are. You, you know the space. <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> once you start doing affiliate marketing, right, it all starts to, to you know. Yeah, um, your niche. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't have a TV set, I promise. Um, <laughs> but no, so I already have these pages. Does Choice Pages re replace those? Or how do I go in and actually integrate something like that? Um, and uh, because it is a page you talked about, it's not mm -hmm. like I drop in a little code of snippet on my active 
buying guide? I would, I would, uh, I would, I would replace it in essence, or or would I? Yeah. So, Genius Link, you know, we talked about kind of the easiest integration is with you know kind of the WordPress. We also you can build links again through the dashboard. You can customize those links exactly how you want. You'd probably be using our Genius Short Links, and you'd just be kind of swapping out uh, via the CMS. You know, for for this specific you know version of the TV, here's the Genius Link that you know is, uh, is going to resolve to a choice page. Um, so. That flow from you know buying guides on a website to using choice pages is not as automated and and as seamless as as it will be. Um, again, start with social media, optimizing for kind of the web website presence. But you can absolutely and we've we've got you know a great case study from a guy that sells uh sells grills um, had you know got hit hard with uh, Amazon's cut. Uh, started using the brand affiliate program specifically wasn't great. Started using choice pages and it worked out even better than the, the two combined. So um, he just went and swapped out anytime he, he mentioned a product, you know, swapped out that Amazon link that then became the brand link with now a, a genius link. So it's you know, gni.us slash whatever that is. And that link will then pull up the choice page that the consumer can can flow through and choose which uh, which retailer they want. If they want to buy from Amazon or directly from the brand or another retailer. Um, and he's seen some, some great results. You, you talked earlier about it, and um, I kind of wanted to double down on it a bit to get your opinion, because one of the most frustrating aspects of moving away from Amazon is finding other affiliate programs that are um, compatible with the products you're selling. Do you have any tips on, for those that are looking, uh, you know, obviously you guys have partnered up with a lot of them already, but what types of things should people be looking at? when they're considering moving off of, of Amazon and offering other affiliates, whether it's on top of Amazon or instead of, um, cause it's a scary daunting topic, but it's one you've talked about a lot over the, over the years. I just love to get your, your opinions on that. I mean, obviously, you know, some of the products you have make that easier, but what are the things to be considering? I'm thinking, for example, when I go and evaluate something and they're paying less commission, does that mean I should avoid it? Uh, how do I evaluate whether their conversion rates will be as high? Like, what are some tips there for people thinking about moving off of Amazon and into other platforms, whether it's in combination or exclusively? Yeah, excellent question. And um, there's a couple different pieces of this. You know, first of all, as as the, the the blog owner writer, you should know that space relatively well. But at the end of the day, you need to ask your consumers. You you need to get some dialogue. You know. Where do you like to buy your products? Um, and it may be, you know, we'll, we'll pick on Best Buy for a second, right? Best Buy is a, notoriously a, a pretty low conversion rate. But if people say, you know, fifty percent of your traffic says they want to buy from 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 Best Buy, it would be a mistake to to avoid Best Buy. Yes, you're getting a pretty crappy conversion rate, but it's better to get a small percentage of something than a large percentage of nothing. Um, so. Ask your consumer and then, you know, make sure that it's, you know, the affiliate program is, is reputable, the, the, the retailer is reputable. But then regardless of kind of what those commission rates are, to some degree, uh, encourage you just to, to check it out and at least try it. So again, your audience says, you know, 50% of your audience says Best Buy is great. You implement the, the Best Buy uh, affiliate program and use, you know, Amazon button and Best Buy button. You know, watch that for, for three months. You know, how, how does that work? Okay, well, maybe the Best Buy affiliate program isn't the best way to leverage Best Buy. Maybe it's actually using Skim Links or or Viglink, right? Because they can incorporate some of the CPC programs that Best Buy doesn't talk about, but are also available. And you may find that there's actually some some better commissions there. And maybe they're not. So you know what? People love Best Buy. It's not converting. You're not seeing commissions. Okay, maybe they they you know like Best Buy for something else, but you're selling something tangential. What's the next best? You know, well, Circuit City is no longer around, but maybe Target or or Walmart. You know. It's it's all an experimentation game, um, and every every niche, every audience is going to be slightly different. But don't be af- ask your your consumers first and foremost. I think, but don't be afraid of programs that have a relatively low commission rate because again, your conversion rate could be significantly higher, and it can make up for that commission rate. Your your average card size may be significantly higher, and it can make up for that commission rate. So there's really kind of multiple pieces besides just that commission rate that often is the first thing people look at, become very myopic, and, and don't look past. So. Um, you know, Amazon obviously encourages one seat at the table, but who are those you know, second, third, fourth mm-hmm. people? Experiment, test, play with it, um, and realize that, yeah, there, there may be some benefits to uh, one of the affiliate aggregators versus just directly working with the affiliate program. 
You touched on earlier, how important is cookie length and how reliable is cookie length? How do you, do you know, do you have any data on that? Do you, you know, what, what does your gut say? Um, we're so used to the 24 hour cookie from Amazon. I see some affiliate programs offer 30 day cookies. Mm -hmm. uh, how significant is that? I mean, should I consider, well, I should consider everything. That's what you just said, basically, but <laughs> consider and test everything, but yeah, consider so and test everything. But let's just say that I didn't listen to that, that last statement you said, but you know, uh, let's say I get paid 4% on Amazon on a 24 hour cookie. I get paid 2% on Best Buy, but I got a 30 day cookie. Like how do I evaluate some of these things? Yeah. Again, I, I don't think it's an either or conversation, right? I'd use them, use them in combination. But one of the things that we found that works well, especially with the choice pages, is, is really around the optimization of your call to action. So find the best price below encourages people without it being a sponsor click or incentivized click, which is against Amazon's TOS, but encourages people to click each of the buttons, right? So they say you have three different retailers there and one of them has a 30 day cookie. They click that button, they're setting the affiliate cookie window, right? You have now just created an opportunity for you to go and earn Halo commissions at a later date. They may not buy that specific product from, from Best Buy, they may come back to Best Buy next week to buy mounting hardware for that TV or a new remote for that TV or whatever it may be. So those affiliate programs that have the longer cookie window absolutely provide an opportunity for again, Halo commissions. And Halo commissions, just a, a quick definition is, is you know, those, those things that are bought that aren't the product they're recommending uh, in Amazon. Oh, I thought you were talking about the video sport. game Halo, but I thought yeah. I'd date myself by saying that. So uh, great game. Yeah. Now Halo, <laughs> yeah. Amazon is, is really notorious where you recommend someone to go buy a TV, but they end up buying toilet paper and a toaster. The commissions you earn from that toilet paper and a toaster are considered Halo commissions. Um, and by having a long cookie window, you have more of an opportunity for Halo commissions to kind of come back through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's um, it's fascinating that uh, you bring up a really good point about the call to action. Uh, you know, you, you can do the best of work with finding all the right affiliate programs, but if you're not moving people off of your buy page, off of your social media platform, off of whatever monetization strategy you're using, if you're not moving people over to those to those uh, affiliate websites, you're not you're not going to get any of the cookies anyway. So. Exactly. Um, there are so many pieces of the puzzle, right? You got to get the traffic, you know, you need to qualify the traffic, you need to encourage them to move. Yeah. That, that funnel, you know, love it or hate it. There are multiple steps in that, that, that sales funnel and you need to become uh, an expert in most, or at least learn how to test with, with most and, you know, get as scientific as you can, you know, what works, where does it make sense to, to optimize, you know, how can you push people through to the actual sale? Um, and that's, that's when you level up from an associate to an affiliate. Right, right. How about these websites that are, this is an opening question. How about these websites? I go to them sometimes. Um, I think I was looking for a, an outdoor product recently, uh, mm -hmm. something to, to, to buy. And I saw a website that was recommending different products, right? Saying this is the best one for this. This is the best one for that. And each one of their products was referring me to a different storefront. Mm -hmm. Some went to Amazon, some went to, you know, whatever it was, REI or something like that. Um, and ha so has Troy, have you guys tested any of that? Do you have any, uh, any dad on any of that? Because that's something that some affiliate marketers look at doing. I could see that being a question some have as they're listening to this. Yeah. So our testing so far has been Amazon versus multi-retailer. Just Amazon is, is kind of, you know, again, the 800 pound gorilla, kind of the default option. So I don't have, you know, does it make sense to go from REI to Amazon plus REI, or does it make sense to go from, you know, EMS or another you know, outdoor store to, to others as well. Um, I definitely think that's, that's worth, worth testing for sure. We found though that the bulk of people, especially people that, you know, traditionally people come to Genius Link to use us for the Amazon tools. So we have a lot of different clients that are pushing Amazon right now. So it's a, a very deep well we can, we can tap into to do these experiments with. As we start to, um, as we start to wrap up, I want to go back to that 2.2 X revenue mm -hmm. increase and just unpack it a little bit more mm -hmm. and give a little bit more detail to it. Um, and you, you were, you were careful to qualify that. Like, that's not obviously what everyone's going to experience. It's going to be very niche dependent and dependent on a whole wide array of factors, but mm -hmm. let's talk more about that 2.2. Cause I mean, that really is the, that like, that's the, that's the hook here, right? Um, if you told me, and I have a, a uh, I have a couple of affiliate websites myself, and I mean it's kind of one of these things where it's you know when you hear a two point two x increase just by changing the nature of how you're offering your um, your recommendations that grabs your ear no no doubt about it even if you're off by fifty percent it still marks such a large increase 
what go, go into some some more of the data behind that and um and where there might be variations and where different niches might experience different variations both positively and negatively sure so again the experiment um and we've got a blog article uh i'll, I'll pass to spencer hopefully we can we can drop it into the uh, description of the video um yeah. or in the, the podcast comments but yeah, found found a number of, of clients. You know, again, we set up a A, a B test. So um, with the Genius Link platform, you can do a handful of different things. You know, Choice Page being one of them, Advanced being one of them, but also the ability to split your traffic to different destinations. So the first link was was kind of the, the control link. That control link would send you know fifty percent to um, you know the, the the control item, which is again Amazon. So we have a baseline to compare against. So we know you know are we doing better or worse? And then fifty percent of the traffic would go to the other destination. Or sorry, the choice page with multiple destinations. Mm -hmm. So everything was set up that way. Uh, you know, it was it, uh, ten different uh, YouTubers. Um, you know, it, it was between five and ten links per YouTube YouTuber uh, per account. We let it run anywhere from four to eight weeks, kind of uh, per per account. We really wanted to hit that that um, statistical significance. So, is there enough of a difference between you know EPC etc. that it's it's you know actually accurate and not just kind of a a loophole. Um, so ran these, uh, Andy on our team, um, you know, kind of managed, managed the project, um, you know, and was very scientific about just recording results and dropped them into a spreadsheet. Um, and again, you can see the, the different aspects of the spreadsheet in the, in the blog and, and crunched the numbers. And, you know, again, some of them, some of them were great. Uh, some of them were, you know, not as good, but, but still left. I'm, I don't think we've yet seen a client that doesn't get at least the same commissions, uh, at least the same conversion uh, going from Amazon. Point. Yeah, so there's there there hasn't been a loss yet. Right. Um, uh, so it all only seems to be upside. Uh, again, it was most of these YouTubers were in the photography space, so recommending you know typically higher price items. Uh, I think the lowest price item was around fifty or sixty bucks, but you know we had three thousand um, dollar know cameras and tripods as well, um, and it was a, a pretty wide range there. Um, yeah, ran for tens of thousands of clicks. Uh, again, we, we checked everything for statistical significance. Everything checked out. Uh, we would run the experiment longer if we weren't seeing a, a statistical significance. So that's why you know some of them were only four weeks. You know, some of them, you know, so, some of these clients were pushing you know so many clicks a day that it, it wasn't a big issue. Some yeah. of these clients were a little bit smaller that we had to run it for longer to to be able to kind of get the data that we needed. Um, but yeah, the blog really kind of puts it all the pieces together. Uh, we've got another blog as well that kind of talks you through how to set up these, these experiments on, on your own as well. And it's um, a lot of people I think are intimidated by setting up an experiment. It's there's, there's, you know, trusting your gut for everything. You know, it, it's great to trust your gut and I do it a lot, but at the end of the day, you know, data speaks, uh, the more you can quantify a direction or a decision, um, the less you're going to have that, you know, gut feeling afterwards that you were doing the wrong thing. Um, so really, really encourage people to, to work with the numbers as, as much as they can, or as much bandwidth as they can. It's compelling. Not only is it, you know, you saw an average of 2.2 X in growth, but it's compelling to hear that really you haven't seen any drop off, you know, so you would be an anomaly if you had drop off from it, you really only have upside to look into that. Um, and also something that brings us kind of back full circle, uh, mm -hmm. all the way back to how we started the conversation, which is, uh, the pain that, affiliate website owners felt back in April of 2020, because all their eggs were in the Amazon basket and increases aside, you're diversifying your streams of income across mm -hmm. multiple platforms and reducing the risk your site has in the future to not just Amazon affiliate cuts, but any other programs, affiliate cuts. Exactly. You, you as the creator, the publisher, the influencer, the affiliate, you know, your job is to, you know, create great content, bring traffic in and recommend the right products where Genius Link wants to fit is kind of that last mile of the product recommendations. We would love to have a system and, you know, at some point we will of making sure that we show the, you know, three to five best retailers. And at some point, Amazon may not be the best retailer to be able to programmatically take take control of that and take care of it for you so that we are ensuring that, you know, is it a CPA deal or a CPC deal or, or what, what way do we want to monetize that, that recommendation, what retailers are, are paying the best, you know, what ones are we going to see the best conversion rates, et cetera. That's where we want to fit with Genius Link. We want to make sure that, you know, you do all that work. Let us take care of that last mile. Everyone benefits. I'm looking through my questions here. I think we touched on all, I was taking notes for the questions, but I think we did touch on a lot. I mean, is there anything I didn't ask you about that you think is really important to share with affiliate website owners and affiliate marketers in general, you know, social media affiliate marketers 
Um, anything we didn't touch on that you think is really important? We covered a lot of topics today, Jared. You know, thank you for for you know steering us through uh, some some good stuff. I yeah. tend to just go deep and end up so deep in the weeds. So I really appreciate your help. <laughs> Well, I think we got deep, but I think we covered a lot of ground. I mean, this is such a fascinating concept because the pain of, maybe not for everyone, but I think the pain has subsided and people have gotten used to the new Amazon affiliate commission rates, but that doesn't mean that- I would argue they're... it's it's like the uh, the frog in water, right? You know, the, you, know, you slowly boil the water and the frog never jumps out. I, I, yeah. I love that was going to be my point. point. That was going to be my point. The, the pain might've subsided, but not because it's any less, just because we've all doled ourselves to it. Yeah. Like the, the need- to address this challenge, which is Amazon reducing uh, commission rates is so vital. Like just because the pain isn't as, 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 as imminent or uh, imminent is the wrong word, but uh, as real as it was back in maybe April or May of 2020, it's such a vital topic to, to address for all affiliate owners. Yeah, exactly. Your, your goal is to make sure that you can, you know, create a sustainable revenue stream for something you love doing putting all your eggs in a basket. It's, it's a great way to move fast in other days, but it is very risky in the long run. Uh, mm. And risky, we, we talked about commission rates, but compliance mm. as well. You know, Amazon, oh. again, I, I I adore their affiliate program. Um, I, I think very highly of it, but I also, you know, I, I can very clearly see that there are some significant challenges. You know, Amazon has, you know, they, they claim over a, a million different publishers. They need to be, pro- they, they need to do what they do, which is unfortunate, um, but they need to be from somewhat programmatic in, in how they, they manage the affiliate program. There's there's a number of bad apples out there. Unfortunately, if you get caught on the wrong side of that, there is very little recourse to get your account reinstated or to get those commissions that they clawed back, you know, back to your bank account. So staying staying in the clear is another, you know, huge risk mitigation exercise that, uh, again, choice pages are specifically built to, to be in Amazon compliance. Um, you know, we thankfully have a, you know, being in Seattle and, and playing this game for a decade, have have uh, a number of, of connections and, and are able to ask hard questions and get good answers. Increase in revenue, risk mitigation, diversify your your income streams. It's um all of it's going the right direction. It's uh, so far so good, yeah. and we've been ha- pushing hard on this for for three plus years. But it's um you know what what's the, what's the class thing? You you have to you know not fail a couple times before you have an unfair playing surface where you can see the future. Um, I'm totally butchering a, a Peter Thiel uh, comment. I think it was Peter Thiel, but yeah, we've, you know, thankfully have been playing this affiliate game. You know, I personally have been an Amazon associate for, for 20 years. You know, the, the business has been around for, for a decade now. Um, we work with many, many thousands of different publishers. We've been fortunate enough that we, we have great connections and, and have been able to learn a lot. And I think we've really kind of uh, slowly stumbled upon a, a tool that, that works well. Um, and I'm really excited to see where it goes in social media and really excited to see how it continues to evolve for, um, for, uh, for website owners as well. Again, we've got a lot of work to do and, and we're, we're certainly getting there. We're a small team, but we're, we're certainly moving, moving forward and making sure that the, the, the blog owners get just as much benefit as our social media team or mm-hmm. social media clients. Share with everyone where they can find more information and follow along with you, with Genius Link and with, with Choice Pages. Sure. So yeah, geniuslink.com is, is really you know the website that curates a lot of it. Um, our blog is uh yeah right off there as well. Um, and I, I tend to write a fair amount. I, I go in, in bits and spurts um, with uh, with the content that I create, but that's uh, that's probably the best place to find uh, information about Genius Link and in, in, in some of my writing as well. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm on Twitter, not as active as I, I probably could be. You know, LinkedIn, yeah, not as active as I could be. I've, got a business to run and uh, tools to build. So it's, uh, yeah, <laughs> but you're, you're welcome to, to reach out on either of those anytime. Um, yeah. Happy, happy to help you, you, the, the collective audience, you know, any, any way we can, please. You know, I'm a firm believer that a rising tide lifts all ships and happy to help the industry increase um, client or not. I'm yeah. would love to help you. Oh, that was a personal invitation, but okay. It, it is. It is for you as well, Jared. I'll fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> well, thanks so much for joining. Thanks for returning. Um, what a what an action packed um, uh, podcast and interview. Thanks for bringing so much great data and insights as we all learn to navigate uh, this uh, this this messy world of affiliate marketing. So, uh, thanks again, Jesse. Appreciate it. Absolutely, my my complete pleasure. Thank you, Jared. Yeah, sure thing. <laughs>